Welcome to the Vibrant Living Network. Have you ever wondered what is possible beyond possible? What is the thing you've been wondering and inquiring about? Are you just feeling stuck and don't know why? Are you thinking or are you seeing? Seeing allows us to expand and have this other experience. We want to invite you for that wake-up call. We want to invite your spirit, your soul, so to be more alive, more connected. Glenn Brooks has been a life coach for over 33 years, author of Divorced to Patterns, Not Each Other, an explorer of what is possible. He has worked with people all around the world. Join us for a wake-up conversation, a dialogue with you. We will have some of the most interesting contributors. We will be talking to some of the most interesting people and have some of the most resourceful teachers, wisdom-filled people from around the world join us. Share your voice, ask the questions, become free of the known into a new world of possibility. We are going to talk about all the things you wonder about, how to live, how to heal, how to connect, how to love, how to be seen. Your life is precious. Enjoy it. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. It's a pleasure being with young Glenn Brooks. I just want to thank Chris and all the wonderful folks, the family at Ohm Times Radio Network, uh, for our partnership with Vibrant Living. And uh, I really appreciate you a lot. A lot of, a lot of um, you've been writing. And uh, I want to acknowledge Kai Cole, my co-host, and uh, as, a, as an innovator connector in the field of uh, community, tribes, teams, and someone that I just treasure. I really deeply appreciate you, Kai. So I'm glad that we're here together, and we have a surprise. Well, not really a surprise. You know, Kai, one of the things I want to get into today, we talk about, we're going to talk about vibrant speaking today, and the four components of vibrant speaking, how they came about, and uh, what makes this kind of a, a very unique approach, because it's not just about speaking on the platform. It's a way of using your imagination, your body, to go beyond this, this tendency to speak from a script, to rehearse, and to be able to, sp- to innovate talks on the spot that moves people. They could, they could feel and be touched by your story in a way that it's almost like you're sitting with them at a candlelight dinner. They fe- really could feel the impact of your message. I've worked with all kinds of people from all around the world. I've worked with people from Malaysia, Canada, all over. And the one thing I could say that's consistent is that at any moment, we have two states. And one state is a, is a counterfeit state. It's a state that we got used to as ourselves, the counterfeit state. And that got reinforced by, learning, by limited learning systems. A lot of people focus on the outcome. A lot of people focus on, well, I think it's best said by one of my clients. She was in Toastmasters 10 years. And she said to me, she said, Glenn, she goes, this is so different. She goes, at Toastmasters... What they'd like you to do is come up with two talks. One is a fake talk, not a real talk. And one's a real talk, but they want you to interchange those. And when she came to see me, I said, no, we don't have two talks. We just have one talk. The talk that comes from this place in you. So just like when you were a kid and felt that energy in your body, that movement of energy, you wanted to jump up and share, like communicate what was there. And so my experience around vibrant speaking, which I've been doing over 30 years. We're going to get into that today. I want to, I want to impact you guys about speaking from your vibrant body, how to use your imagination in a way that will totally produce, will change the way you breathe. It will change the way you connect with your audience. And it will wake you up to, those, to, the, to that message in you. And if you're a couple, I, I love working with families and couples because there's a... There is a uh, unified state. There is a vibrant message or a vibrant sensation, which I'm going to get into. I'm going to get into that sensation. There's a sensation in your body when you speak from this place. And this place, again, isn't a rehearsed, descriptive place. It's a state where you feel more bodily energy. So this is this practice also will change your body and change the rate at which you breathe. I'm honored to have with us today. He's going to join us for this segment. Rita. And Rita's a friend of Dr. Mm-hmm. Teshna, and you're, you're going to be here because I just, I felt when I spoke to you, I'm going to let the audience in on this. Uh, I sometimes people call me like a safe breaker, you know, I can kind of listen to the codes when I hear someone's voice. And as 
soon as I heard your voice, I just felt such a feeling of home, and I, I just felt you were, I just had such a good feeling about you coming on the next segment to share your experience, you know, working with Dr. Teshner. So I just want you to be as free and bubbly, and let people know your name and your website, and I'm gonna then we'll just dive into this. And I want you to feel anything bubbles you could just you could speak and share. Sure. Uh, my name is Rita Gandelman, and um, I work with children with special needs, primarily children with autism. I am delighted to be on the show. I, I cannot wait to um, hear everything that's going to happen. And my uh, website is FridaMethod.com, and there's a, a lot of details there on what I do in my life. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. And we're going to hear a lot more about your – what we're going to do on the second segment is we're going to dive into your story – of deepening love in your life, of using uh, the, the, some of the methods that Dr. Tesh has been talking about, but more importantly, how your experience of love and closeness changed in your body and changed in your life, and also how you eradicate some beliefs that were holding yeah. you back. We're going to get into that. Can now, Kai, we're going to be – yeah, thank you so much. From the, from the depth of my heart, I'm so happy you're here, and I'm very happy that you're <laughs> – it's you. It's you. Um, <laughs> So, and I want to, at some point, I want to acknowledge, and Kai, I know you'll remind me that I want to acknowledge my, my good friend, Jimmy Lang, uh, in Boston, who owns several restaurants, including Fuji. So we'll be going to Fuji during our, our time at Harvard. So I thought what I would do, Kai, is I would go over the four principles of vibrant speaking and sort of how they evolve and, uh, and how they kind of, in some sense, I don't know, formed a body of work that's, that's, has spoken to a whole bunch of different people. So I think I'll, I think I'll start. And Kai, I'd love you to interject and, and, and something bubbles for you. So I didn't really enjoy public speaking at all. I always felt put on the spot. I felt that, um, I felt, yeah, I just felt like I was, I wasn't in the place often. But then I, I, I stumbled, I went to New York City. I had to give you the first wave, the first wave of this, which sort of changed everything for me. Um, so the first wave was I was, I was pretty, I was pretty ill. I had these really bad sinus headaches and my mother, had, uh, you know, basically I got on this medication, but the medication kept me up all night. And, uh, so I, I would, what I would do is I'd wander into bookstores and, um, I had I had two feelings. Remember, I said at the beginning of the show that in vibrant speaking, there's two states that we live in in every moment. So we live in a vital state, uh, our vital sensation. What I mean by sensation, it's a sense in your body that when you could feel it and tune into it, you could kind of get a sense of the message that's there. And how I work with people around vibrant speaking is I have them move. So when people come to me sometimes, I might have them move and not say anything to me. So, because I want to get them in touch with this uninhibited, vital sensation in their body that's always been there. It's gotten covered up. It's gotten inhibited. It's gotten domesticated. But when they speak from it, there's a quality in their body and their experience that's totally different. A lot of people say, well, it's like coming at home again in their body. The, the focus of the conference at Harvard uh, is on, on mo movement, mo movement, the brain and cognition. Very simply put, it's how, the, how our movement impacts our brain, and our brain allows us to experience another connection with consciousness, right? There's a bigger, you, know, you could say that we have a local brain, I'll say it my way. You have a local brain, but there's also an access that happens to something bigger, and that's what a lot of people I work with experience that so we work with experience so the first environment speaking is this, this vibrant or vital sensation and so it's funny Kai because I was thinking about this a lot of times I demonstrate this um, well let me let me let me just go there let's just have an interaction read I want you to comment I want I want to go to phase one of vibrant speaking so vibrant speaking is the ability to speak to people from your heart and soul from your being that uncovered state and speak a message that's been probably in you for a long time and know in your heart, in your body, almost like you could take someone by the hand and walk them to a secret place in the woods 
and say, this is my tree. That's the feeling you have when you're on the podium. And what your experience might have been is nervousness and being inhibited. But I could, you know, literally, I, I as an example, the pre, we had the president of the Holistic Dental Association on, and she said, well, I'm just terrified to be on the show today. She says, I can't do it. She says, I can't speak in public. And I said, let's just, let's just do this session. Let's work together. And I said, I don't know if it's going to be one session or 20, but I want you to, if you're willing, I want you to explore with me how to speak from this other place that you're not used to. And I said, would you allow me that? Would you allow me to explore with you? She said, yes. Little by little, because what happens when you're in the vital sensation, your breath changes and you become more tolerant, right? You become more tolerant of what's been in, intolerable to you. You become more tolerant of what you acquire that's not you. And you develop a, a patience for people that you've never had before. Um, so I've had people come to me in severe crisis. I had a, a police detective come. I'm going to get back to the dentist. I'll share, I'll share with her. But I had a policeman come to me who was, they gave him the wrong medication. He ended up in a, men, a mental home, mental institution. And I said to him in front of a group, he came to one of my groups, and I just said to him, I said, Joe, I said, right now I'm going to have everybody breathe, because I also teach relational skills. I said, I'm going to everybody breathe, and I want you to tell this story, but I don't want you to tell the story from impressing anybody. I just want you to say what happened and feel your body and, and tell me what happened. Just tell me what happened from, from the first moment you had this panic attack. And I just, what I did then is I breathed into my body and kind of created, by the way, this is a, this is a new way I want you guys to think about things. I, I, I created a relational space with him. In other words, I was conscious of my space and his space being one space called relational space. Is that, is that a, did you guys get that one of the relational space, how that kind of changes the game? Oh, completely. Relational space. Completely. Mm -hmm. How do you, how, completely? Tell me, tell me, Rita. Well, for me, because I feel for me, um, if I'm an individual and then there is yes. an individual in front of me and yes. there are two individuals that have their own reality, if I am, yes. if uh, in order for me to share their reality, I need to tune into yes. them and create a third almost entity, which is called the relationship where two parties are involved. Yes. If that yes. doesn't happen, you don't, you're not able to hear each other and, and get each other and connect. Yes. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So. In that relational space, Joe shared a story. And uh, so what happens when someone shares a story, there's, there's, there's one phase of it. And, and what happens often is they, they go through a certain phase where they kind of release what was in the way. It's, it's a sort of a, it's like a, I guess it's like a, a butterfly effect or a phoenix effect. Because they start to get a, this other sense, right? They have another sense. Mm -hmm. To go to, to share about the dentist. She wrote me this letter that was so beautiful. She just said, you know, Glenn, she goes, I did a session on vibrant speaking. And she goes, the unexpected thing is, and this is unexpected. I don't promise this. But she told me she actually started speaking in front of groups. And she had a new place of reference in her body and in her imagination. So um, so phase one is this, is this and I, I, I say play. I really encourage people to play with this. And I encourage people to be very honest with, with, you know, with us about what's there. So I'm so excited we're going to be at Harvard because we're going to be with movie professionals from around the world. And they play in this stuff all the, you know, they, they're playing in cognition, they're playing in movement. And what's sort of interesting, and I say this in such love and honor, is that sometimes when they speak, they still speak from a sort of analytical and intellectual place. So this is really speaking from a place in your body of vibrancy, and it's using your imagination. Um, I, I work, what I, we do with people is we give them a very specific imagery that in some ways they share. So I ask them, we ask them, what, what's your superpower? And I have them breathe into that. What does it feel like when you're your superpower? Like right now, I want you to run across the room. When you feel your superpower, who are you? And what I do is I, with each person, I'll say, oh, it feels like when you have your superpower, when you're walking on the earth, like the earth springs back and you can be buoyant. Do you feel that buoyancy? And I have, I have them immediately begin to play with that. So the idea, what I wanted people is to get this sense of this vital state, this vital sensation. I wanted to have an imagery 
And when I say imagery, I wanted to go there several, you know, several times a day. It's just seconds. I wanted to touch into that. And if I work with a couple, I do this with a couple or family. So, Kai, I just want to stop. So what happened with the dentist, she wrote me actually another letter to say she, you know, was getting in touch with this vital sensation. And this comes about a whole bunch of different ways. And sometimes people report to me, like Laura London, who wrote me this really beautiful letter. Funny enough, she's a YouTube star. She has a very large following on YouTube. But she said to me privately, she said she had really a tough time in front of audiences. And we, we did some work together. And I want to say play because it really is this – there's a sense of buoyancy, freedom. I'm not trying to look for a problem. What I'm doing is I'm engaging their brain, their soul, and their body in a way that's uncommon to them. And I'm in that relational space with them. And what she said to me was, she said, you know, Glenn, my, my, my brother was a hemophiliac. Hemophiliac. And she said, I was working on the movement. And she said, I stopped giving up making quick movements because I could bump into him and crash into him and he could die. So I stopped her. And I said, I want you to pay attention. What's, what's the feeling of it? Tell me, tell me the body story. Like, tell me what's happening in you. And she started to cry, which I call the release phenomenon because people release. What we do is because we, we all of us tend to develop this, this, uh, the counterfeit, right? This other part of ourselves. She started to cry, but it was this, it was kind of this, I guess it was, it was kind of a gentle cry. And she just said, oh, she goes, I just gave up doing that. And she goes, now when I go to speak, I have this sense, you know, that if I move quick, and our, our imagination was a lot about her going to, let's say, a tree or a playground. And the whole practice was, okay, move. I want you to feel movement, dynamic movement in different directions. And then I want you to share with me when you do the movement, what's the image? You want to have each person come up with an image that they feel in their body. And by the way, 95% of people have gotten shut down at school. I did a, I did a whole series on this, and I had this guy, a uh, physicist, he wrote in, he wrote a book about how, to, how going to graduate school just, you know, he, I think it was called Prisoners of Mind. Brilliant book. So what happens is people come, I get people coming, and, you know, they're scholars, so they're very well educated, but they, they have no ability to speak without a script. All right, we're going to continue here in the Vibrant Living Network. We're going to invite Cole to share what's on her soul, her mind, and you here in the Vibrant Living Network. It's an honor to have you on board, Rita. Stay with us. Your life's precious. We'll be right. We'll continue in a moment. Thank you. The Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Ohm Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research, and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers, and researchers pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics, and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here, and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness, and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday, and together we can discover what's really going on. In the wake of a disaster, what one thing can you send that will help people the most? A blanket, a tent, a sandbag, a doctor. Actually, if you send a monetary donation, you send all these things. Even a small donation can make a big impact and can quickly become exactly what people affected by disaster need most. In the wake of a hurricane, your monetary donation can make a huge difference to those in need. To donate, visit supporthurricanerelief.org. That's supporthurricanerelief.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Hello, I'm Glenn Brooks. You're listening to the Vibrant Living Network. I deeply appreciate the people at Home Times Radio, Chris and the crew, Kai Cole, my uh, my brilliant co-host. Kai, I thought I would I would go to you, and because I want to know that I'd like to hear your you know since you're, we're going to be giving the talk on Sunday, I want to 
have you share or, or tell me what's speaking to you and what's making sense and resonating with you. My vibrant speaking and vibrant speakers international, our speakers bureau and our approach. Love your comments. Sure. As I depart the broadcast, <laughs> it's been such a pleasure to be on for the first half. Uh, Glenn, I'd love to know if you could share from your expertise what you are doing to prepare for this magnificent moment. Thank you. What I do is I, I get up, uh, <laughs> I love mountaintops, Kai, very much. I go to mountaintops, and when I'm not in mountaintops, I I visualize, I, I, I use imagery. I see the people, in, I see the people in the audience. I, I get a sense that there's people that have come, they're hungry, and they're coming for one distinction. They're coming for something that's going to be significant. And so I, I almost, in my intuition, in my sense of the room, physically, I start to feel that. I want to be prepared. Like I, I spoke up in, uh, in Vermont. Had about 150 people come. There was a minister that came, and he he, he wrote me a endorsement. He just said he told I told changed the way he gave his sermons, in a way he hadn't considered possible. Uh, I prepare by going up to mountaintops physically. I prepare by imaging the, the people. I ask I ask for help. I ask for I ask for wisdom to come through me. You. Um, I just I keep. I guess for each, I don't do a cookie cutter talk, so I, I think to myself, okay, for this audience at Harvard, like, what do they need? What's going to be a contribution? And then I, like, I feel at this audience, I'd love to do a demonstration, because, you know, I can say anything I want. I'd like, to, I'd like to have some volunteers. That was what came to me at 5 o'clock this morning when I was moving. So I was moving in my living room, and I was kind of getting a feel for, like, oh, what would really... What well, can really demonstrate this? And so what I do often with people is I go to the back of the room and I have them come in the front of the room and I, I facilitate. Sometimes I may, I may actually touch them and say, okay, I want you to feel your arms or feel your body this way. So I guess imagery, tuning into the specific group. Um, sometimes, you know, because we're close with Dr. Norm Shearley, I was going to call Norm today as a neurosurgeon. And you know, have a conversation with him. So, imagery and movement are the two things. And then having dialogues with people, so I could kind of get a sense from people in the somatic, neuro brain plasticity community, that kind of growing group. Like, what's relevant to them? Like, if they could really change their presentation, and they can impact their colleagues, they can impact their peers. And then I talk to people that have too, people who. You know, like I like to talk to Dr. Sue Johnson, who who broke, you know, had a major breakthrough, but it was very tough. Her colleagues didn't treat her well. So I do my best to realize that. I guess my preparation is imagery, movement, and then I have, a, I always have a, I have a book with me, and I write down, and then I get, I review in the morning again. I review it in the morning, but, but always I get up uh, a little before her sunrise. How's that? Was that helpful? Extremely, yes. Okay. So, um, so, vibrant, so vibrant speaking is beyond the platform. It's really a way of life. I, I've had the honor of flying, people flying across the country after co just actually a couple of conversations. So vibrant speaking is the ability to use your instrument, your body, in a way that moves and speaks to people about the purpose of your message so that it cuts through the, the uh the assumptions and conclusions that people had before they came to your talk. But when I say came to your talk, I'm meaning this is a, meeting a colleague or an author or meeting someone of influence. So it's really a way of life and a way of using your imagination, which changes your brain, which allows you to listen to the listening, which is another thing, another principle of vibrant speaking is the ability to listen to the listening. And I had this experience of listening to the listening. I, I really didn't know how to talk about it. The ambassador of finance in Chile was arrested and put in front of a firing squad. And what he said about being in front of this firing squad, right before they were about to kill him, he said there was a pause and the gunman listened to the listening. And in that moment, they shifted and didn't shoot him. 
And I thought, oh my God, he's, he's someone that kind of languished what I was exploring. So listening to the listening is a moment of influence and relational power that occurs just through listening and paying attention differently, uh, which is the third principle. So we have the, the, the vital or the vibrant sensation. We have engaged imagination or active imagination. We have, and then we have listening to the listening. And the fourth principle is relational. So I also teach relational imagery. And what I mean by that is I have people work with you to help you shift your brain and expand things by they, they share a vision with you. So I feel like the relational effect or the community effect impacts people at another whole level. I first started teaching groups, um, I was probably 24. The first time I got paid for speaking, I was speaking in front of a group of people at Fanny Schaefer's Vegetarian Farm in New York, and they were in their 80s, late 90s, and a couple over 100. And I finished speaking to them about a guy, the guy who invented juicing, Dr. Norman Walker. I thought, let me share my story with Norman Walker. And I left, and this guy followed me. He was probably in his 90s. And he looked at me. I was wearing a, front, I was, I was wearing a long sleeve shirt somehow. You know, it was a summer day. And he gave me $10 and he said, keep speaking. And I felt that meant in my heart that I could not just keep speaking, that I could live this and share this with people in a way that I never heard. I never had an ounce of this to school. And I also felt it was confirmation that I could prosper and do something beyond competing that would be prospering and transform my life and the lives of others. So that was the other thing was, you know, I call it golden feedback. That's the chapter in my book. I talk about there's a lot of feedback we have in life. And most of the feedback is irrelevant or intrusive. The golden feedback is the feedback that speaks in a way that allows you to see something new and begin to live it and implement it in your body, in your mind, in your brain. And then we, and then this, the imagination. The imagination stuff is some of the most powerful stuff I do with people. I, I allow some people to call me very late at night when they're in Seoul. They're in another time zone. They could call me three in the morning. I don't speak like a regular person. I could wake up very conscious and have a conversation without being dreary. I just, I have, I, I, I do that with some people because they're going to be, they're working on something and I say, okay, this is going to be the exception. You got me on call. Hmm. I'm just checking one thing here. Ah, mm -hmm. Heading into session of time here. <laughs> um, heading into session of time. Listen, I just, next week I'm gonna, I'm gonna review and go into Fu the Fuji restaurant with Jimmy Lang and to say that Jimmy was one of the most impactful people in my life around real food. He came to meet me with his girlfriend. And by the way, Fuji is in uh, Kendall Square in Cambridge. It's the best, uh, sushi I've ever had in my whole life. But the food is so clean and nutritious, you'll have a great food layover for days. Jimmy's become a family member, myself and Kai and her fiance, they will be there. I want to thank them and let Tony know that I, I'm so appreciative of his warm hearted welcome and we'll be at Fuji. And I guess, I guess, uh, we're at the bottom of the hour. So I, let me check, uh, Ty and see if we have Dr. Teshna here. I think we do. Dr. Teshna? I think we do. But he, of course, you're like, you're a great representative reader. So even if Teshna wasn't here, you'd represent him so well. It wouldn't even be close. You know what I mean? I wouldn't be concerned. <laughs> great. Okay, we don't have her. Okay, so I said to you early in the conversation before I kind of like honestly because they fell in love with you. I just, I just, I'm one of those people. I can feel the keys. If I'm talking to someone, I can feel in my body the connection. I felt it very strong. And you said to me, I could dive as deep as I wanted. I'm going to really dive deep with you. Your whole, your whole life turned around. Yes. 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 Okay. Your whole life turned around around love. You were married 11 years. And Kai, if you, could you stay with us? We stay a few extra moments. You're gonna go. I know she left. You got you, Kai. That's why I left. All right, let's take us to that time. You work with Dr. Teshna. Wholehearted welcome. Introduce yourself, and then I want to, I want you to share your story. Introduce yourself again. Say your whole name, what you do, and then I want you to share this beautiful, powerful story about how you changed your beliefs and changed your love life, and how these particular unusual, impactful, innovative teachings of Dr. Pesha came in your life. Just introduce yourself to the audience. Just say something about yourself, and then we'll, I want you to tell your beautiful story. Absolutely. Glenn, thank you. Okay. Uh, You're welcome. My name is Rita Gendelman. 
and I am actually, I'm um, originally from the former USSR. I need to put that in because that's part of my, who I am and my personality. So okay. I'm very proud of that. <laughs> and I Beautiful. Am, thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm presently living in New York City, working with children on the autism spectrum. And I am someone who dives very deeply into my own psyche, into my own emotional realm, in order to best yeah. serve the community, the people, and everyone yeah. around me, and myself included. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, I was married for, thank you, thank you. I was married for actually 12 years, and um, uh, around four years, uh, um, so around eight years being together for eight years, I felt that there was, a, there was something missing in my marriage, and I would say the key word was passion. And that's a tough one because I, you know, I feel like a very passionate individual in general. And when passion is missing um, in a marriage, it's very, very hard to sustain it. It's very hard to go on. And it affects all the other dynamics of your life. And, um, you know, I wanted to really address it. And I shared with my husband that this is something that I feel is strongly missing for us. He completely agreed with me. And then I said, well, Mm. why don't we tackle it? Why don't we... um, see if we can get help. There are so many mm-hmm. beautiful alternative therapies out there, not, not talk therapy, but alternative therapies that work with the deep yeah. unconscious mind, you know? Yeah. And I said, yeah. why don't we do this? I was so excited because I knew there is an enormous level of healing that has to happen within me. And I'm yeah. assuming within him well. because we attracted each other, you know? Mm-hmm. So beautiful. Yes. So, uh, thank you. Thank you. And I feel like every relationship is here for healing, you know, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. And the pain sometimes is so strong, but I keep, I keep thinking, you know, the healing is what needs to happen, and I'm going to go for it because eventually, eventually when you confront it, it all feels so much better. So it's really worth it. But it doesn't always feel that way when you're in pain. <laughs> so mm-hmm. he said to me, uh, you know, I love you. I want to be with you. I'll support you no matter what you do. Uh, I feel that I've done a lot of work on myself in my life. I don't want to go back to childhood pain. I don't want to relive all of it. Mm. I don't want to think about it anymore. And he basically said he doesn't even believe that that's an effective method to really shift consciousness and shift belief Mm -hmm. systems. And he said, you do what you do. I love you. I'm here for you. But I'm not going to go with you. Uh, Accept me as I is, as he said. (laughs) <laughs> you know, I took a deep breath. <laughs> I, I took a deep breath into it. And, you know, I, I did know it. I did learn in my life that accepting what is is a very powerful place to be. Mm-hmm. And uh, pursuing or screaming, you know, yelling at him or trying to motivate him to anger or threaten him is not a way to go. It's way, 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 way too much energy wasted. So I decided, you know what, let me see if I work on myself. Would that change our relationship? Would that help us? Would that transform us to the level of what I'm wanting? And that's when mm-hmm. I found Dr. Teshna. You know, and mm-hmm. um, uh, she came to me as a referral from um, energy healers who used to live in the Berkshires area who moved. And they said that they went to her for, um, you know, a, a lot of sessions for about a half a year. And they felt a huge shift in their family dynamic, in the way that they were relating to each other as a husband and wife, in the way they were relating and raising their child, a typical neurotypical child. And they really felt a sense of a huge relief. And I knew how much they were struggling. I'm like, okay, I need to try this, especially because I've never heard of it. And it seems like it's completely outside of the cognitive realm, meaning that I don't need to talk. I just want to feel because I'm a person who loves to feel. And mm. when I know, when I get to feel the negative, the uncomfortable sensations within my body, that's yes. the best way to release whatever is um, holding you back, whatever resistance yeah. you have towards full vitality. What, I have a question, Rita. What, what made you feel you could, tr- like, tell me, because a lot of people don't know Dr. Tess is working, and she's not with us yet, I don't think. Um, what I'm curious about, how would you, Describe or, or share with the audience what you found about Dr. Tesh's work specifically or how she approached it because it wasn't talk therapy. It was very innovative. What specifically made you, you said it, you were entering the body and releasing from the body. Was there something very specific that made you feel like, oh, my God, this is sort of a one-of-a-kind or standalone work that made you pull to see Dr. Tesh? Absolutely. So I did give her a call, and I did interview my friends, and I called, gave her a call. What resonated with yeah. me is that, 
um, she said I use the body's wisdom to identify where the blockage are and where the emotional mm. emotions are trapped, and then we are yeah. able to release it through the meridians. And I'm like, okay, so there's no talk therapy. There's definitely body wisdom involved, which for me is the key factor for any kind of therapy and feeling your feelings. Uh, and being involved in the process. And she does this through a very specific, simple structure, and she accesses my realm of emotions through uh, something called applied kinesiology or muscle testing. Uh, I'm sure your audience know a lot about that. Not everyone does, but it's it's pretty wonderful. You just raise your hand, and uh, she basically, she asked me, so what would you like to work on? Or another way Mm -hmm. to ask me, what would you like to be true for you that is not true right now? So, I mean, there was many different systems that I, uh, belief systems that I worked with. But um, one of them, I'm just trying to think, I want to be more concrete about this. So one is, okay. Um, I'm okay, I'm okay being married. And I was mm. not. I mm. was absolutely not okay being married. She tested me, my body went weak right away. So when your mm. arm drops in a muscle test, that means you are not yeah. congruent with your, with your thoughts. And you are not congruent with what your body wisdom is actually telling you. Yeah. And when there is a discrepancy there, then there is a problem. And you can go in there and find out what is the belief system that is holding you back from being happily married. And I mean, honestly, there was in an, within a half an hour, it's actually super quick. She finds those, those belief systems very quickly. Uh, I remember we kept on going back to a seven-year-old. I uh, want to share this. I was molested when I was seven years old in uh, Russia. Mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, that really colored my life in many ways. And that was one of the reasons why I married a man who wanted to have an open relationship marriage. Oh, it's, I, I didn't know that. Fascinating. Yeah, yeah, it is. And uh, mm-hmm. me and Tashna worked on the emotional complexes and emotional belief systems that I created at seven years old in order to survive and protect myself from this atrocious uh, event and very traumatizing event that really shaped Mm -hmm. my uh, life as a woman and how I relate to men. And um, I couldn't commit. And I married someone who really didn't want to commit. And I didn't want to commit. And I was in this, uh, you know, open marriage that was very painful and uncomfortable and I wanted something else. And Tashna Mm. helped me to shift the blueprint of love, as she would call it, for myself, and what kind tell of people, tell people, kind of- tell people, tell people, Rita, tell people the physicality. Because when I went to see T- Dr. Teshna, um, I would lay down or be on my back on a Correct. table, like a chiropractic table, and she would test Correct. my whole body from one to one thousand. What was that like? Did, like, okay, what was it like? We're going to continue with Rita's yes. story of, of a new connection with love and in depth of love in her relationships and this innovative work of Dr. Teshna. Stay with us here on Vibrant Living. We'll continue. I'm Glenn Brooks. Appreciate you very much. You're sharing so in depth, Rita. Sure. Absolutely. Feed your soul with waves of consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free, ascendinghearts.com. More than 24 million Americans have an autoimmune disorder, and that number continues to grow. I'm Sharon Saylor, and I'm one of those 24 million. To put that number in perspective, cancer affects about 9 million and heart disease up to 22 million. That's why I've brought together top experts and those thriving regardless of their diagnosis to bring you the latest, most up-to-date information. Join me, Sharon Saylor, Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, for the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio to find out how to live your life uninterrupted. Hey, Dr. Phil here. You know, I help people solve difficult problems every day, but one problem has me stumped, childhood hunger. Nearly 16 million children in America struggle with it. Luckily, the Feeding America network of local food banks collects surplus food, giving hope to hungry children and their families. But they need your help. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Hello, I'm Glenn Brooks. You're listening to the Vibrant Living Network, along with Kai Cole, and just a wonderful team members from all around the world. 
and uh, going beyond the conclusions and the assumptions of what's possible, being able to demonstrate and live a more wisdom-filled, powerful, relational life, talking to Rita, who's worked with Dr. Teshina. And Dr. Tesh is not here today. Dr. Tesh is giving a seminar in August at Apollo, Apollo, where she's actually going to be sharing some of these very innovative ways of clearing blockages. You know, a lot of, I love what Tesha says, Rita. She always has this great line of saying that love is, and even when you make that statement, she's saying a lot of times you might say love is when someone hits me in the face. Like love is, or I, what did she say? Our love is the, the beliefs we get used to. Even if they're crazy, our subconscious says love's like this. Someone kicks me in the kneecaps and steals all my money, but that's what love is. So I guess I got to hang in there because that's love. How did, how did you make it to, how did you make it to, yeah, exactly. I mean, isn't that wild? That's, I think that's so brilliant. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, my God. For me, love was always equal to control. Mm. So any man, so I tell you, uh, even before my uh, uh, ex-husband, I dated every yes. man. Uh, every man I dated was always the most yes. control freak you can imagine. I could not dress a certain way. I could not eat certain foods. I yeah. could not look at a guy. I could not do, I could not have, fra- oh my God, suffocation upon suffocation. And that, you know, mm. that, that was just crazy. And then I found a man who was completely, I went the other way, who absolutely had no limits and no boundaries. And that didn't work either. So I <laughs> was just winging, you know, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. my ideas of love were a little bit warped, you know, like it's like yeah. either yeah. suffocation or no limits at all. And neither one works. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you dig deeper, I mean, if you want to dig deeper. Uh huh. Uh-huh. And so I see you went. You went from both. You went from both extremes. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And then I wanted to find what is my actual truth. What does my body really want? What do I want yeah. to be like? Yeah. In a relationship with a man that feels the most freeing and the most loving towards myself. What? Well, okay. Let's say what is it? Share, share that with you. What is it? You tell me. You go deep. What did you discover after all this inqui- inquis? You know. There's a lot of beautiful women listening, a lot of wise women and men listen to the show. What did you discover that was very different than, because what we discover and what we used to is sometimes two different worlds. What did you discover that was a revelation was so new for you in relation to what, what is the love set that really you discovered working with Dr. Tesha that maybe surprised you that was different than you ever had before? Well, here's the thing. I want the whole thing and nothing less. I only want, mm-hmm. I want everything. I'm very hungry for that. So what that means mm-hmm. to me, I want to be able to connect with a man on a sexual level, sexual yes. level, on a emotional yeah. level, psychological, yeah. spiritual. I want the whole union feeling that I, and not get lost in it and still know who I am and yet feel fully one. Mm-hmm. And um, I had, with my ex-husband, I had the heart. And I had the mind connection. Spirituality, yes. I'm not sure. I'm still clearing that up. I'm not 100% sure. Yes. But we did not yes. have the sexual and the sexual union that I was craving for that would feel satisfying and that would feel honoring of who I am as a woman in my, and, and yes. what I was looking for. Yes. And uh, yes. with Tashna, because I had a lot of locks around sexuality, I was not able to fully surrender and go there with my ex, who also had his own issues and thoughts about sexuality that were not able to fully support me, who I am as a woman in that moment, and make me Mm. feel fully open. It takes Mm. two to tangle, and neither one of us Mm. in the sexual arena were able to tap into that higher consciousness where we feel one and we feel seen. Mm. And with Tashna, I had to fully rewire that. And part of that rewiring is letting go of the trauma that I was, was in, involved in when I was seven years old, where a part yeah. of me fully shut down. And I brought that into my relationship, and I let that go through my relationship. But my husband had his baggage, and he was not willing to let go of his. And therefore, we're not able to go both to a higher level of intimacy, but that's what I wanted. And I was able to identify what didn't work and fully, honestly, with total transparency, dive into the emotions of complete fear and complete separation from life. And I cried on Tashna's table for many, many hours, weeping, feeling like nothing, feeling so ashamed, feeling like I don't even deserve to be alive. And I had to, she just held me in her love, and she just said, Rita, do what you need to do. Keep accessing those meridians. That's part of the structure to release it from your body, 
hold the meridian that we found, whether it's anger, resentment, whether it's, you know, whatever she found, mm-hmm. there are only six uh, yeah. access points she works with that are associated with very specific deep emotions. She would test yeah. the emotion and I would go right yeah. there and I would cry like a baby. And that was a way to transform and release out of my cellular DNA structure, the shame, the disgust that I felt for myself as a woman uh, yeah. for many different reasons, but primarily because yeah. of the seven-year-old trauma. And she was able yeah. to help me release the trauma fully. And however, the beauty of it is that now I knew what I want and now I reshaped yeah. who I am as a woman and the kind of man I want to attract. And my husband yeah. did not fit the glove, they, they did not fit yeah. the bill any longer. You know, what surprised me, we're talking to Rita. Rita, keep saying your, your say your whole name to us. I want to make sure I don't, I don't mess up your last name. So uh, No problem. Rita Gandelman. <laughs> okay, beautiful, Rita. You're such a sweetheart. So, Thank you. You know what surprised me? You're very welcome. You know what surprised me was, you know, I'm a, by my own life path, I became a matchmaker, kind of unexpectedly. And the kind of matchmaking I do is very different than what's out there. And uh, so it's funny. When I think of relationship, I always think about, I sometimes might call it sacred monogamy. I always think about monogamy. So when you slipped in an uh-huh. open relationship, I thought to myself, uh-huh. my, my thought is that can never work. <laughs> right? I don't get it. I don't get it. I just don't get it at so many levels. It's unattractive to me. And so when you slipped that in there, because I was thinking, wow, we just seem so pliable. And why wouldn't a marriage work? But when you said, Open, I thought, oh, that's not going to work. <laughs> How do you feel treasured? In, I, I, just, I was thinking that was interesting. Now, Teshna's teaching this workshop. Kai's going to be there. I'm going to go see Teshna. Well, let me see. I'm just, I want to I wanna answer some questions that the audience is asking me. One is, she's teaching at Kapali. I know there's a, a Facebook. It's going to be on our Facebook page. If you go to... Uh, Yes, there is a Facebook. Vibrant Living Network. Vibrant Living Network on Facebook. We're going to post this there. Chris at Ohm Times Radio is going to put a post, and we're going to have Tesha. She'll be with us again next week. What would you want to say to people who's like, I don't know, like what you're saying is so profound. I guess one of the questions that occurred to me, sometimes people are really reluctant to do things to release the trauma because it seems traumatizing. Overall, was it mostly the rewards you experienced great? In other words, did you find the process to be – I don't know. Um, I guess you did find an honorable. Was it? I guess it's such a confusing large topic, the idea of releasing trauma. Was it mostly, how would you describe it in terms of like, hmm, a lot of people think it takes years. Tess just said to us it took six weeks for her to release pretty much major blockages. So she, people have said to me they've worked with her in less than a year and what might have worked in, like in 20 years. So what's your experience around time and process? How is, is a process? So, yeah. Yeah, it's good. Great question. Thank you. So, um, Thank in terms you. of time, I, I'll be honest with you. In terms of time, I'm 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 marvelled by Atashna. She's super quick. She's so quick. She yeah. doesn't. She she just goes right for it, and she goes to the yeah. deepest level, and she doesn't stop until she really gets you to a neutral place. Uh, yeah. As long as you're willing to do that. So, I mean, it took me a year only because uh, here's the thing: I live in Manhattan. She lives in the Berkshires. I work. I have a yeah. life. I have a lot of things. Yeah. I if I yeah. literally dedicated myself. Fully, I said, Tashna, let's do an intensive six weeks. I'm at your house. I guarantee you after those six weeks, I would be a new person and I would be able to create a mm. life that I want in whichever dynamic mm. I wanted. There's no doubt. I mean, she's yeah. that quick and that laser sharp and that safe for someone to be with. I really believe that very clearly. But the individual has to be so willing to go to that yeah. realm of depth. And yeah. not everyone is. They say they do. But I've seen people do inner work, and this is what still surprises yes. me. I've been yeah. through a lot, a lot of deep, deep workshops and circles where people yeah. do great work. And yes. I tell you, after a year, the person never changed. Huh. And I'm thinking, what is it? Why do people not change? And I constantly change all the time. I have yeah. such a desire and deep willingness to let mm. go of the darkness, to connect with the darkness, to not judge it, to know that I'm a human being that has a light and a darkness. And no matter how mm. much I know how to love, there is still yes. darkness. And it's important to dive into it and not shy yeah. away from it. And if you're going to be yeah. afraid of that darkness or whatever, I call it darkness. It doesn't have to be. But it's, it's something that you yeah. judge or ashamed of, whatever that is. We have different words to yeah. describe it. If you're not willing to merge with it, you are not going to go very far. And that is a willingness on your part as a human being to want to do that. And if you feel that you don't have the willingness, explore why you don't have the willingness. That's the belief system that I would change. 
Do you know? Do you have the dates of the workshop of Doctor Tess's workshop, Sharita? I don't have it. In, it's, it's in August. Do you know oh, the dates by chance? You know what I'm. So it's okay if you don't. I, I, we're gonna we're gonna post them on Vibrant Living Network on Facebook. I know that Doctor Tess is in the middle of, of uh, putting up a new website. If you go to if you go to Vibrant Living Network on Facebook, Vibrant Living Network on Facebook, you can also learn about our upcoming Vibrant Living Summits where Doctor Tess is going to be speaking. Is there anything you want to say for the the, the reluctant? person, the person that's maybe a little frightened, a little doubtful, and they've done workshops before about coming to Dr. Tess's workshops. So maybe, maybe you could share with us what's changed, maybe three things what's changed since doing this work on the Moody. So the Moody is energy points in the body that correspond to psychological and energetic places in our, in our, in our body. What three things that have changed for you, Rita, significantly around love? I want to tell you, okay, I'm going to tell you. I don't okay, please, to please. Things. I'm going to make it quick, but I'm just going to say. Okay, <laughs> take your time. I have to tell you, Glenn, and I'm, yes. that I'm going nuts inside. I have the All most right. gorgeous relationship with a man that I can ever imagine. It's complete magic. First of all, wow. I transitioned from my ex-husband. Beautiful. Yes. We're still the best of friends. He just bought wow. me and my, uh, I call him my lover, my, 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 yes. lover, but it doesn't matter. He's my lover. He's my best friend. He's my husband, whatever. He's my, yes. my <laughs> ex-husband, seriously, my ex-husband, just, yes. to us, just to let you know, I need to say yes. to people to see the greatness of this, the yeah. most incredible gift for our housewarming, we just moved, he bought us high-end special bed sheets for us. For our new apartment, is that normal? I mean, no, no, I'm concerned about him. No, you don't understand. Yeah. Because he fully knows and supports wow. me who I am and the way we laugh. Yeah. Because it was so uh -huh. loving. You have to live in a relationship mm. with love and honor. Mm. And I honor and love. Mm. And he honors and loves him. Me. Mm. He honors and loves my relationship with my present man because yeah. he knows that is the highest truth for everybody involved. Mm. That is the highest truth. And uh, we are so in love, me and my present, uh, his name is Gerd, he's a German man. Yes, We are yes. living together. We are constantly yes. creating the relationship that we want. Things come up, but we are so willing to dive into it. And I mm. have the most passionate, amazing intimacy with him because mm. I don't need to hold on to the trauma anymore to protect me mm. from being hurt. Mm. That's so beautiful. Jashna gave mm. me the freedom, and I was also mm -hmm. willing to go there. To really mm. love freely without any any need to protect who I am and know that I can surrender to the masculine force in front of me and know that mm. I can trust it and not get hurt. And that is something that Tashna gave me. And I never had that before. And she Well, really you, are, you, yeah, you, know you articulated it so, so beautiful. Let's do this. I, I don't have – you have Dr. Tesh's number there, Rita. Let's give out our phone number, too, if anybody wants to call her and speak to her about the upcoming workshop that I want to see her. All right. Great. She's so genius. All right. God. Okay. You know what, Rita? You, 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 the, the dance and the appreciation and the wonder speaks between your words. It's, it's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. I could give her yeah. – may I give her a mobile number? Is that all right? Of course. Yeah, give her a mobile number. Let's, 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 people can call on the mobile. Disturb her. Get, get in touch with her. Thanks. Fantastic. Her number is. Yeah. 518-256-6622. One more time. If you guys have any questions, any questions, this is them. You can reach Dr. Tesher at and learn about her individual work and her, uh, her group. Her, Kai, my co-host, will be there. Go ahead, please, Rita. What's the number again? Okay. Area code 518 256-6622. Wow. By the way, you have a beautiful way of articulating such wonder and, and such beauty. Like, so, your relationship with, is it Jared or Garrett? So beautiful. So <laughs> profound. So, and by the way, I I know it sounds funny, but your the, your former husband sounds like such a loving guy, and I could definitely use high-end bed sheets. But I just wanted to put that out there. <laughs> All right, so he, this guy sounds like a very generous guy, and I don't want to put any blockages on receiving great bed sheets. So if it does come up, please. Yeah, you yeah. got it. No problem. I'll, I'll let you Thank you, know. you Rita. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I kind of feel we're all one family down here, and it's really wonderful when we share new bed sheets with each other, even if we don't. Yeah, you know that thing like so sometimes we don't think we know someone else. I don't want that to be a barrier here. 
Absolutely. Um, no, I understand. What's, what's, <laughs> what's the, so Kapalo? I want to share about Kapalo a little bit. I've gone there for 28 years. I've uh-huh. had the honor. I've had the 